Griffin, a name historic in Australian boat building. The Sydney-based family produced a series of classic yachts and cruisers. From putt-putts and small sailing launches to a series of exceptional 30 and 40 foot motor cruisers and Alan Bond's first offshore racer designed by Ben Lexon, the mighty Apollo. Apollo, winner of line honours, Sydney to Hobart Yacht Race in 1978. Once one of Australia's biggest boat builders, Griffin became synonymous with quality, pioneering innovative designs and techniques. The largest of their launches was Sundowner, a big volume, 65 footer, built in 1971 for Sir Theo Kelly and later owned by some prominent Australian families. Sundowner was probably six or eight months in the planning before it was actually built. A project that was different to anything that we'd done before because of the sheer volume of it. And the whole job was done on a handshake with Sundowner. There, was, there wasn't a contract as such. They just shook hands and built the boat. That was an incredibly modern boat for its time and it was designed by a bloke who was 70 plus years old. He was quite progressive with his, with his lines and his, his eye for, for detail and, and balance and symmetry in a plan. The period that Dave's talking about is interesting because there was three generations of shipwrights working in the factory on those boats that went through at that time, which is um, you know, a pretty special thing and it was actually being launched down here. You know, half a motor vale was standing in by the sea road watching it come out the door of the factory. It was just, you know, amazing. And then there were photos of it as they were coming down the bay. People just standing there because it was such a big boat. Now at 50 years of age, Sundowner embarks on her next chapter, a comprehensive refit. The first major phase sees her sail north to Queensland to one of Australia's most respected shipwrights, Craig Fielding of Lighthouse Shipwrights. An exciting project we will document as we profile what is an Australian classic. Classic boats and boats that are built to a certain way are art. The skills and joins and techniques that go into creating these big pieces of art, yeah, are extraordinary. I love the history. Just now we're taking what you class as a major refit. We've been pretty privileged to get that job. The hull is good, decks are good, it's a cold moulded one again and it's got four layers of 10 mil Oregon planking so it's really built well for that construction. That came out of the um, Sundowner? Because of the age of the boat you don't know exactly what you're going to find once you sort of start stripping out areas that nobody's really been into in the last 40 years. Well you can see that there, there's an old fluoro in there. That's a fluoro light fitting. So they've just left those in there and buried them. I've made a decision to cut out a bigger piece just to take out all the other little pieces that have been replaced over the years, just to replace it with one nice patch. So I'm just doing everything in reason to make sure that whatever we build on top of is sound. With the materials we're using now, the boats that we've restored are better than when they were built. And we've used, you know, we've, we've fixed the inherent problems that they may have when they were built, because back then when they were doing it, that's the way they did it. Now we know that if you do this, it will prevent that happening. It's relatively straightforward, you know, measured a hundred times and cut once. Some days, though, when, you, when you're just sanding and sanding fiberglass and things like that, you don't really think too much, you just got to be careful. But but most of the stuff we do use is just a whole lot of thinking, yeah. And even when you think about it driving home, you think thinking it at home or on the way to work, you're just still thinking about it. It's a struggle. Like, it's not easy. And I take the jobs home with me too. Like, I just can't, you can't switch off on it. And the amount of time and effort and money um, and passion that the owners have got to have as well to be able to want to go through the trouble. So we've got to be on the ball about what we're doing. So fantastic for Dave and I and the rest of the family to, to see that, um, it, that you know, it's getting the, the love and attention that we think it, it deserves and, uh, and you know, it, it, the heritage goes on, it's, it's great. The, the connections you form with these, with these things, they, they do have a life, they have a spirit and 
و بیکم فرافیه I like it after you've done a lot of work and all the plastic and covers that you've had on to protect everything and then when you finally can take all that stuff off and you can see the boat again, yeah, that's, that's a good day. So the pedigree of the boat, who built it, um, even though a lot of those guys and yards are long gone, their boats are still here and with the right owners, they'll be here for a long time to come. Some boats a hundred year boats, like you know, you get boats that are going to be around for a hundred years. A lot of them are not, but some of them are, and I think that that's one that will be. It sort of it was it was really well built at the start. It's always been well maintained, and it's a boat that has a a, a quality or an, an an aura, I suppose. That it's been lucky, and we've been lucky that passionate people have owned it, given it this love and care that it needs to sort of to carry on as the quality of the vessel that it actually is. And we're only doing justice to the, to the great guys who built them originally. So we're just finishing off and preserving their, their work. And it doesn't matter whether they've had major restorations to keep them going, they're still that boat. It's still there. That, and they're part of history. They're the boats that can tell, they tell stories. From stem to stern, join us at Australia's Classic Boats as we follow the Sundowner refit journey. Published at coastwatch.com.au Subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash coastwatch1.